a few years ago, there were a number of articles about this big red supergiant beetle goose that were just about to go Nova, and all of a sudden it began to dim significantly. Uh, and then it came back and people were discussing, oh, is this like a precursor? Is this about to actually explode into a supernova explosion? Now, Beetle Goose is only 640 light years away, putting it basically in our backyard. So what would actually happen if Beetle Goose went supernova tomorrow? First of all, I won't go into too much detail with the like mechanics of what causes a supernova. This is a complex topic for a separate video on its own that I might do in the future, so get subscribed for that. But we're all going to talk about the consequences of a supernova um, this close to Earth as Betelgeuse is. So in 2019, astronomers began to see Betelgeuse dimming, and by 2020, it has dimmed to just a third of its normal luminosity. This is quite a lot, and not just a small amount. And people were discussing why the star was suddenly dimming and if it was about to explode. It then later turned out that what actually happened was that Betelgeuse has ejected what's called a coronal mass ejection, which is essentially like a big blob of plasma that is ejected from the surface. It's not a solar flare. Solar flares are a lot more violent, uh, but also ejects a lot less mass, but a lot faster, where coronal mass ejection is more like a bubble. It just rises up of hot plasma and is ejected away from the star. So it ejected this blob of plasma, and that plasma blob happened to be ejected in the rough direction of Earth. And as this blob of plasma moved away and became cooler and cooler and cooler, it turned the plasma back into a gas. And as it turned into a gas, it began absorbing light. And that's what happened. It sent out this plasma, turns into gas, it absorbed the light from the star. So from our perspective, it looked like the star was dimming, but actually it was just a coronal mass ejection blocking some of the light as, the, as it was cooling. But it still raises the question, like what would happen? What would happen if it went supernova tomorrow well not a whole lot it turns out <laughs> so supernova explosions are extremely bright and it is like unfathomably bright to the point that when we see supernova explosions in other galaxies that one star while the explosion is going on outshines every other star in the galaxy combined all the billions of stars in the, in the entire galaxy emits less light than that one supernova. It is a bright event. When eventually um, Betelgeuse does go supernova, which is expected to happen in the next uh, 100,000 ish years, could be tomorrow, could be in 100,000 years, we don't know. But when that happens, it's going to be about as bright as the moon. And that means that that thing's going to be like shining actual light you can navigate by the light at night and you will be able to see the star during the day as well it's going to be that bright it's going to be a phenomenal event it's not just a once in a lifetime this is a once in maybe forever that we will see a supernova explosion going on but other than the light show honestly not a lot's going to happen i mean it is going to send out a bunch of gamma radiation uh, I mean, a lot of gamma radiation. And obviously, somebody will be sent towards us, but luckily, we're so far away that it won't really do much. It is estimated that in order for a supernova to have any noticeable effect on Earth, it would have to be in within what's called the kill zone, which is a 25 light year radius around the Earth. Now, a kill zone sounds very ominous, and it's not as bad as it sounds at first glance. First of all, imagine that we had Betelgeuse was within our kill zone and it went off. The explosion itself wouldn't actually do much to the Earth. Um, and the gamma rays itself is not really going to hurt us much either. But they are going to have an indirect effect. You see, when this hot gamma ray radiation hits the atmosphere, they're going to take the nitrogen and the oxygen in the atmosphere and turn it into nitrogen oxide thereby depleting the ozone layer. Now, that's a problem because when the ozone layer is suddenly gone, we are no longer protected from the radiation from like the cosmic radiation and more importantly, the radiation from our own sun. So what would actually happen in this case is the gamma radiation would strip the ozone layer and then all of a sudden going outside is going to be very hazardous as you're going to be 
exposed directly to that hard UV light from the sun, which will cause best case like extreme sunburns. And we will probably see a rise in, um, in, in, in skin cancer conditions. So we will probably see a lot more people dying from that. But how likely is it that a supernova would go off inside our kill zone, if you will? Well, basically none. Well, it is none. Because the types of stars that can go supernova, they are bright. They need to have a mass of at least eight times that of our sun. That means they are extremely bright and therefore also quite easy to detect. And of the 215 stars that is currently catalogued within 25 light years of Earth, the heaviest is Sirius, which is about twice the size or the mass of our star. And that means that this, even the heaviest star inside our kill zone is only a quarter of the mass required for it to go supernova. It doesn't mean it's going to do a small supernova, they're not going to go nova at all. And therefore, I can with a lot of confidence say that we're not going to see a supernova that close to Earth that is going to have a noticeable effect on our life. Best case is that we're going to see a supernova, hopefully in my lifetime, and that it's going to be a spectacular event. And frankly, I will be looking forward to it. The first line, the reddest of these lines, is the hydrogen alpha line. And you might know this as the eight alphas. Just up this road is probably one of my favorite observation spots for astrophotography. 